So uh, a purple team is a security regression testing uh, CLI and software as a service, targeting web applications and APIs. The CLI is uh, specifically targeted at sitting within your build pipelines, uh, but can also be run manually. The SAS uh, that does the security testing of your applications and or APIs can be deployed anywhere. So it's been about a 3.8 year journey so far uh, that's brought Purple Team from uh, the proof of concept to, uh, to where it is now. I finished writing a uh, book series uh, to help developers upskill their security. Um, that would have been it, probably around four years ago, which had the proof of concept um, inside that, which, uh, which Purple Team was um, a grown out of. Uh, so I ran lots of workshops with the proof of concept to elicit uh, developer feedback and confirm that what I wrote about was true and uh, valid. Uh, most of that time has been like seven days a week and two full-time jobs, um, pretty much until recently, until we've had some um, customers uh, basically come on board and yeah, actually start to pay. Um, so building a tool that helps developers write secure code is a great way to learn about security. If you uh, want to learn more about information security, uh, we can assign a mentor to you to help you um, to help yourself and the community uh, by building Purple Team out. Okay, so this is a um, high-level architectural overview of our Purple Team. So this is um, OWASP Purple Team or or our Purple Team Local. It's it, it runs in uh, the local environment. So what you can see up here is your um, system under test. So that could be a, a web application or API that you have decided that you want um, testing. Now uh, we've got the CLI here and we've got the back end, uh, which has all the components that does most of the work. So the CLI will make a um, initial request to the orchestrator. The orchestrator is responsible for the um, other testers. Currently there's three testers, although the server scanner is currently um, stubbed out. It's not yet implemented. We've recently implemented the TLS scanner. Um, so the testers themselves are responsible for emissaries. Now, the emissaries are the actual parts that do the scanning and that sort of thing. So for the app tester, we're using uh, Zap and we use Selenium to uh, proxy uh, the initial requests uh, through Zap. So the stage two containers, um, basically, they are Zap and Selenium currently. Uh, they're hosted on Docker Compose UI uh, locally. And the test SSL.sh emissary for the TLS scanner tester uh, sits within the TLS scanner uh, container because there's no need for it to be out external. Um, so what happens is the emissaries actually when a job file gets sent through from the CLI to the orchestrator, um, the orchestrator does a whole lot of validation and stuff like that, then passes it on to the testers. Then the testers decide how many test sessions there are. For the TLS scanner, there's only ever one, but for the um, application scanner, there could be, um, I've got a I've got a soft limit of 12, but usually it's, it's way less than that. So if, for example, you've got two test sessions, then, the application scanner will spin up two sets of uh, of emissaries. So there'll be two Zap containers and two Selenium containers. Those uh, Zap and Selenium always work hand in hand. Um, so uh, yeah, in order to spin these containers up, uh, the uh, the testers make or the, uh, the application scanner makes a request to uh, some Lambda functions or a, a Lambda function. Uh, which is sitting on SAM CLI locally. And then that spins up these containers and then brings them down again after uh, the testing's complete. Um, so all the uh, events basically that are happening in uh, real time are pushed onto uh, Redis channels. And then um, uh, the orchestrator ends up with those messages because it's subscribed to each of those channels. Uh, if you're using service sent events, uh, which generally you will be if you're uh, running the whole shebang uh, locally, 
then as the uh, subscribed messages come in from a Redis, they're just pushed straight to the CLI. If you decide to use long polling, then uh, uh, the orchestrator pushes those messages back into uh, Redis lists and then pops them off the lists as requests come in from the CLI. So that's sort of a, a rundown of all the uh, back-end and front-end components there. How does Purple Team help us as developers? How does Purple Team help us as a business that creates software? And, w and why would I want Purple Team in my build pipelines at all? To answer these questions, I'm going to take you back to a section that's in a number of my previous talks. Traditionally, how have we found security bugs in the software we write? Basically, we haven't really, or we've done it really late. Sort of like ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. So our red team has a week or two to find all the defects we've been conscientiously adding for months. Generally, a red team will cost you about 20K per week. And the engagement will be like two weeks for a small to medium sized web application. Um, software project uh, before release for a small to medium size sort of thing is going to be six months. So that'll be about 40 grand for a six month project. So that's just for the red teaming. Generally, five criticals, 10 highs, 10 mediums, 10 low severity bugs. This is just an average uh, will be found. And that's if you're lucky. Uh, many bugs are left unfound waiting to be exploited. The business often only only fixes the five criticals because it's now so expensive at this point in time to fix them. So each bug has an average cost of 15 plus times what it would have cost to find and fix them if they were found and fixed when they were introduced. Okay, so... So how do we actually set up Purple Team? So I'm head to the uh, setup page now. Okay, so first of all, you have to set up the uh, Docker network. Basically, this list here is just the um, is a list of the comments uh, components we're going to scroll through on the setup page. So you've got to set up a Docker network. You can do that manually, or, you, or it will be done automatically when you run um, the stage one uh, compose file for the first time. So either or. Uh, you obviously need a system under test. We often use NodeGoat for our application um, if we're testing our web apps as opposed to APIs. Uh, if you decided you wanted to take it for a test run, you can use the likes of this override file just to apply to the uh, node goats uh, existing docker compose file which will edit um, add it into the uh, our purple team uh, docker network so that it can reach it locally we use um, our purple team infrastructure as code system under test this is a um, a terraform project which allows us to uh, quickly to de uh, deploy any system under test that we want uh, um, providing you've got the source code for it. So, yeah, uh, feel free to take this project for a spin as well if you want. It's 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 great for getting um, systems under test up and running quickly. Uh, so then we've got uh, the Lambda functions. Uh, the details are on the README link to here. The stage two containers, similarly, details are on the README. There's not a lot um, to set up with those. The orchestrator, um, you'll need to set up an environment variable. And if you've got a firewall running, you'll need to uh, create some firewall rules. Uh, you need host IP forwarding turned on. And any additional setup details are on the readme link to there. Uh, for the actual testers themselves, as I said, the server scanner is still not implemented. The application scanner and TLS scanner are. The details for those setups are on the README. Uh, there's uh, there's very little to do there because it's mostly taken care of with the Docker, comp Docker Compose file. And the Purple Team CLI, which is a bit of configuration 
after the install. Um, let's just have a look at that. So that's the contents there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so um, to actually install, there's uh, um, at least a cup. I'm um, at least three options there. Three main options that we use. Uh, so cloning the Git repository is a good option if you're planning on running or debugging Purple Team standalone uh, with a UI. npm install locally is a good option if you're planning on running or debugging Purple Team as a spawned Node.js subprocess. For example, if your uh, build pipeline is predominantly uh, Node.js. And the npm install globally option is a good option for uh, running if uh, your build pipeline is in a different language. Um, also, another option is the likes of npm link, which which um, allows you to have your source code all uh, cloned or forked uh, locally. And you can, by running npm link, you have a system wide uh, command. So that allows you to, um, yeah, uh, basically, um, allows you to run the Purple Team CLI from the source code just by linking that up. Um, so the workflows for the CLI, again, are just listed here. So we are, we take the same three options, uh, one, two, and three, and then we've just got a little bit of uh, uh, details under those uh, for actually running uh, the CLI. There's not a lot to it. It's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, of course, there is... There's the configuration to be done as well. So once you've actually got this installed, you'll need so you'll need a job file, uh, which I'll show you shortly. And you'll need to yeah, configure the actual um, list up of values that are in the config file. And some details here around uh, a UI, whether you're using other UI or whether you're using no UI, which is basically just headless mode. So emulating the AWS Lambda service. So these are the commands that you'll need if you're actually doing this uh, manually. Um, generally, you won't use these if you're just uh, you're just running it as like a full system test run, which I'll show you shortly. But the, um, but the commands are there if you need them. Everything's here if you actually need it. Uh, debugging. So I've got details here for uh, debugging your lambdas. And the application scanner and any sub processes, which is uh, Cucumber at the moment. So you can debug into the app scanner and then you can de uh, debug into the sub processes reasonably easy. So those are the steps for that. Uh, the other testers are, are a lot simpler uh, because they don't, uh, because it's just one test session for the likes of the um, TLS scanner. And the orchestrator doesn't have any sub processes. And the front end, yes, yeah, some uh, uh, debugging details there as well. And the full system test run, which I, which is actually the next slide. Steps there for that. So the uh, Docker Compose UI, which brings up the stage run containers, host your Lambda function. So I show you all this soon, um, actually in a in a running uh, demo. Uh, by way of video. So you host your Lambda functions, make sure your system under test is running and accessible. Uh, yeah, so you run the Docker Compose to bring up the stage one containers. So stage one is the orchestrator and your testers. 
and then start the CLI, and then that actually talks to uh, your back end, and that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so I'm just going to change my uh, a screen sharing setup so that you can actually hear the audio of this. Hi, today I'm going to show you a test run with the back-end components as well. I'm starting Docker Stats to show you which containers are coming and going. We start Docker Compose UI, which is responsible for taking orders from our Lambda functions to start and stop the Stage 2 containers. We start SAM Local, which is responsible for hosting our Lambda functions locally. And we already have our system under test running. Now, once we've built our stage one images with npm run dc dash build, we can bring them up with npm run dc up. And then we start the CLI. In the bottom left terminal, you can see the validated, filtered, and sanitized job file contents. In the top right terminal, Docker Stats is showing us the stage two containers being brought up. In the bottom left terminal, we're checking and retrying that the stage two containers have come up and are responsive. All testers are now running. As the test run progresses, in the CLI tester complete panel, that's the donut meters, you will see the percentages progress. These are total percentages per tester. In the running statistics panel, just to the right of the donut meters, each row represents a test session as defined in the job file. Here I'm tailing the CLI TLS tester log just to save right arrowing on the CLI terminal to the TLS tester screen and not being able to also see the app tester progress. Back to the running statistics panel. The thresholds you see are also defined in the job file as alert thresholds. A given test session will be considered a fail if the bug count exceeds the alert threshold. Alert thresholds are useful for Brownfields projects where you have existing defects but still want a test to pass. These are the definitions. You may find yourself referring to these quite often. Back to the running statistics panel. You'll notice a complete column. These cells represent percentage complete of the test session, where you may have more than one of these for a given tester. In order to initiate a test run, the build user needs to define and supply a job file. This is the documentation that will help explain the schema and help you construct your job file. Next, I'll show you some example job files. This job file is very similar to the one we're using for this test run, except we're targeting nodegoat.sat.purpleteam-labs.com, which is deployed using the Purple Team Infrastructure as Code System Under Test project. The new bugs panel of the CLI shows bugs over and above any specified alert thresholds. If this count is above zero, then you are going to have at least one failed test session. The total test to progress meter to the right of new bugs shows the combined progress of all testers. These logs I'm showing you are the raw CLI logs taken from the current finished test run. This particular log is from the low priv user test session of the current test run, currently being written to the top of the two CLI window panes as we speak. You'll notice that this particular test session is only testing a single route, the profile route of our system under test. This particular log is from the admin user test session of the current test run currently being written to the bottom of the two CLI window panes as we speak. This test session is testing two of our system under test routes, the profile route followed by the memos route. As you can see, the server tester is currently inactive. Now we'll 
the TLS tester log. There was only ever one of these per test run. You'll notice the colour codes in amongst the text. These are used to display the log text in colour. We'll see how this works soon. We're looking at the same CLI logs as before. Tools such as cat, less and tail, if configured correctly, will render the colour codes. Just reiterating that these CLI logs are currently being written. I've just taken them from the finished test run. This is the low priv user test session CLI log from the application tester. As you can see, this is a failed test session. This is the one and only TLS scanner test session CLI log that I showed you before but with the colour codes rendered. These CLI logs are what is printed to the CLI terminal if you are running it in QE mode versus no UI mode. Right arrowing and left arrowing in the CLI terminal will switch between the different tester windows. As you can see, this is a failed test session. When you see the outcomes have been downloaded to message, that means the test run is complete and you can now inspect the report files generated by the emissaries and the result files generated by Cucumber. This is what the outcomes archive looks like once it's been packed by the orchestrator and sent to the CLI. You'll notice the report and result files. This is the HTML report file generated by the application emissary, Zap Proxy, for the low priv user app scanner test session. It lists the alerts or defects, along with how they were found, how you can reproduce them, as well as directions for fixing them. This is the HTML report file generated by the application emissary for the admin user app scanner test session. This is the HTML report file generated by the TLS emissary testsl.sh for the one and only TLS scanner test session. This is the Markdown report file generated by the application emissary for the low priv user app scanner test session. This is the Markdown report file generated by the application emissary for the admin user app scanner test session.
This is the CSV report file generated by the TLS emissary for the one and only TLS scanner test session. Here I'm highlighting the severity levels. These can be one of low, medium, high or critical. Refer to the job file documentation for further details on these. This is the JSON report file generated by the TLS emissary for the one and only TLS scanner test session. These are the three ND-JSON result files generated by Cucumber for the three test sessions. Loprev user app scanner test session, admin user app scanner test session, and the one and only TLS scanner test session. The app scanner admin user test session for the profile route has completed. It's now starting on the memos route. The app scanner Loprev user test session for the single profile route has finished. The log which has just scrolled off the screen provides defect counts and details of where to look in the reports. This is the log and outcomes files documentation. The app scanner admin user test session for the memos route has completed which means the test session it's in is finished. In this case, both Loprev user and admin user test sessions have failed. The CLI log file that I showed earlier contains details of how to use the report files to locate and remediate the defects. Stage two containers have been brought down. Now we've just right arrowed to the TLS tester to watch it finish. The test session for the TLS scanner has now finished. This also failed because the defect count exceeded the alert threshold that the build user defined in the job file. You may also notice that the total tester progress meter hasn't reached 100%. This is because the server scanner isn't currently enabled. As you can see, the outcomes files have been downloaded for you to inspect. Cool, so that was a, a full uh, run through of uh, Purple Team, a full test run uh, with a couple of um, a test sessions there. Uh, so remember, um, uh, we're looking for contributors to help um, uh, work on Purple Team as well. Um, I'm on the OWASP Slack as well currently. If you have any questions uh, later on, um, then jump on there and uh, yeah, uh, ping me and, and I'll answer back. Uh, so that's pretty much it from my talk. Um, I guess it's if anyone's got any questions now.